Hi, Blockchain Visionaries, I'm George Levy. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about smart contracts and dApps, or decentralized applications. Many people use the terms interchangeably, and actually, that's incorrect. And in this video, you're gonna find that there are some key differences between what a smart contract is and what a decentralized application, or dApp, is. Stay tuned. We will now go over the differences between smart contracts and dApps or dApps. As we discuss smart contracts versus dApps, what you will see is that many people sometimes use both terms interchangeably, and that is actually incorrect. There are some marked differences between smart contracts versus dApps, and I will go over them in this video. Let's start first with a definition of what smart contracts are. Smart contracts, also known as smart code or smart property, are computer protocols that can act as a contract. Let me explain further what I mean by that. Let's assume that two people want to actually enter into an agreement and they need to draft a contract. Instead of needing a lawyer or some broker, any type of third party to be able to be there and certify and notarize that contract, instead, a smart contract is created in computer code. And recently, it's been used in blockchain. The reason why I say recently is because smart contracts, the term was first coined in the 90s by Nick Zabel. So the concept of smart contracts has been around for some time, but the use of blockchain and the decentralized nature of blockchain has made smart contracts a very powerful tool. And that's why right now they've gained so much prominence. So in the context of using a smart contract with a blockchain based platform, what you have is that you have a contract that's fully created in code that runs on a blockchain, for example, the Ethereum blockchain. Now, because of this, these contracts need to be front-loaded. What that means is that that contract needs to take into account every single consideration, because once you set a contract or a smart contract in motion, you can't stop it and you can't cancel it, because otherwise it would be rendered null and void. As a result, you need to make sure that every single Every single possibility has been taken into consideration before you set that smart contract in motion because if there's a mistake in that smart contract, there's nowhere to change it. Now, that's a smart contract. Let's move now to a dApp. So a dApp or dApp, both terms are used. Some people call it dApp like email. Some people call them dApps. It's short for a decentralized application. And what we mean by that is that it is an application that is mainly or fully decentralized. So think about it. When you use an application, you're not just using a contract, you are using a full application. Like for example, a web application that you would engage with, you put in some information, you get some sort of return. So the key thing is that a dApp is mainly or fully decentralized. And I wanna say that because many decentralized applications are not fully decentralized. And that's because many of the key things, for example, hosting, messaging, need to run on centralized products. So the key thing is that a dApp doesn't necessarily have to be fully decentralized. It can be mainly decentralized and still be a dApp. So key things I wanna point out is that as the dApp works, it can use multiple smart contracts. And what I mean by that is that it's not merely one smart contract. There may be multiple smart contracts that are operating within a dApp. As a result, these smart contracts are pieces that can work and elements inside a dApp. Now, the smart contract can be used to decentralize the back end. What that is is the business logic of the dApp could run on smart contracts. But key things that we need to take into consideration is that not everything on a dApp needs to run on smart contracts and in fact it can't run on smart contracts. Some things for example the front end of a web application or any type of decentralized application needs to be programmed in a different language for example HTML you need to use JavaScript CSS Solidity which is the language for which you would program these smart contracts cannot help you create that front end. As a result, the dApp needs to do more than merely just have these smart contracts. You need the other functionality as well. Other things, for example, such as storage. 
it's prohibitively expensive to keep information inside smart contracts. So as a result, you do not want to store the main information inside smart contracts. Additionally, as I mentioned, the cost of smart contracts also makes it prohibitive for you to be able to use it for every single part of the functionality. As a result, it is important to note that decentralized applications do not require exclusively to use smart contracts to handle the business logic. And in fact, what you should do is actually reserve only the most important pieces that need to be trusted to rely on using a smart contract. Otherwise, you're better off using a different solution. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something in the process. I bring you brand new videos every single week, so I invite you also to subscribe so we can stay in touch. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, we are changing the world, one blockchain at a time. I'm George Levy. Thank you for watching.